Most people look at their fields and see what is growing above the ground. Every year, farmers seed millions of acres of wheat, canola, barley, oats, peas, lentils, corn, soybeans, and a variety of hay, fruit, and root crops. With an eye on the world's agricultural industry, this list grows exponentially. What we do not see is the life that is teeming in the soil. And this life, with the bacteria and fungi as its cornerstone, is the key to healthy and abundant yields. When we go into our fields, too many of us see unhealthy soil conditions resulting in the need for higher and higher input costs and lower and lower profits. Yet, what we want to see is reduced input costs, higher yields, and more profit. This can only be achieved with healthy soil. Healthy soil exhibits these characteristics, loose, well-structured earth, which promotes good aeration and percolation. It has a high population of organisms that you can see with the naked eye and millions of microbes that you can't. How many? Healthy soil has on average 600 million microlife per teaspoon. Why should we care about how many bacteria and fungi are in the soil? because they are the cornerstone of healthy soil. When soil is teeming with this life, we establish a healthy environment that aids in promoting and maintaining healthy roots. Healthy root structures take up more nutrients to the plants. As the plant becomes more and more healthy and abundant, so do the crops we harvest. Plants need nutrients to survive, and most are absorbed by the roots. Microbes extract nutrients from the soil, refine them, and either store them in their body or concentrate them in and around the roots where the plants take them up. In return, plants excrete sugar back into the soil for microbes to use. This symbiotic relationship is a natural process and is to the advantage of both. Microbes feed the plant and the plant feed the microbes. A balanced community of microlife is essential for healthy soil. The aerobic organisms collect in the soil and refine both naturally occurring nutrients and inorganic fertilizers, making them available to the plant. In this picture, the small specks are bacteria, which are largely responsible for the refinement of nutrients. These organisms eat, store, and release more nitrogen than any other organism known on this planet. When they have the right food, moisture, and temperature, they split and divide, on average, every 20 minutes. Fungi are the large tubular-like organisms whose job is to transport the nutrients to where they're needed at the plant's roots. These tubes, called hyphae, can extend from a few inches to over 100 feet in length. As the fungi extend their reach, nutrients far removed from the plant are transported to it as needed, in exchange for sugar given off by the plant. The interaction of bacteria and fungi is essential to the health of the soil, providing the basis of the food supply for all other soil life and a protection mechanism for the plants from predators within the soil. For instance, grazers and herbivores eat roots, but when a healthy fungal population exists in the root structure, they act to kill these root feeders, which in turn creates food for the fungi and bacteria, and so it goes. Grazers and herbivores are essential to this environment because their movement through the soil helps to loosen it. Burrowers such as earthworms also live in this environment, creating larger tunnels that aerate and allow water to seep deep into the soil, supplying roots and soil life with much-needed moisture, which is stored for future need by other soil life, even in drought conditions. Nematodes and protozoa also have an essential role in maintaining soil health. As the bacteria refine nutrients, specifically nitrogen, the nematodes and the protozoa in turn eat the bacteria. As these predators do not require all this nitrogen, they deposit the excess back in the soil, making it readily available to the plant. All these organisms ultimately become food for each other, and when ingested, certain ones retain some of the other microbes' nutrients while others excrete the excess nutrients back into the soil. As these organisms die, they become food for others and deposit nutrients such as nitrogen in large concentrations in the rooting zone. 
All the organisms I've described so far are classified as aerobic organisms, meaning they need oxygen to survive. A healthy plant absorbs the majority of the oxygen it needs through the leaves, but the root system and the microbes also need oxygen. As the oxygen level goes down, microbial populations are reduced and the soil begins to ferment. Fermentation produces alcohol, which further jeopardizes the health of the plant. With reduced oxygen availability, anaerobic organisms which don't need oxygen begin to multiply. Anaerobic organisms, for the most part, are pathogens or disease-causing to plants. Even the best current farming practices reduce the number of beneficial aerobic organisms within the soil. As healthy aerobic populations are reduced, anaerobic life begins to take over and yields go down. Compaction of the soil happens when we take heavy equipment across the land, squashing the homes of the beneficial organisms, reducing the amount of air in the soil, and limiting the soil's ability to absorb water. All these harmful actions reduce the beneficial life in the soil, which in turn reduces yield and profit. We break up the structure of the soil by tilling, which destroys the colonies of the microlife. As the fungi is hyphae are broken, the ability to search out and carry nutrients to the plant is also interrupted. Healthy levels of bacteria and fungi are essential to healthy soil life. When both the colonies of the bacteria and the fungi are disturbed and killed, the entire food web of the soil begins to break down. Most farmers put fertilizer and chemicals into the soil, but for now we'll talk about the single most common one, inorganic nitrogen. As nitrogen interacts with existing soil moisture and rain, it dissolves and is attached to the water. As the water is absorbed by the plant's roots, the nitrogen in the water inadvertently is taken into the plant as well, upsetting the natural balance of nutrients within the plant. As the plant's nitrogen level increases, its need for water also increases, because nitrogen is a salt and salt dehydrates. There are many nutrients required for a plant to be healthy, and healthy plants regulate nutrient uptake so they remain in balance, using only what they need. When inorganic nitrogen is absorbed by the plant along with the water, the plant's nutrient levels become unbalanced. For instance, nitrogen causes the plant to grow tall, but the cells of the stalk become very thin, making it susceptible to disease, pests, and even lodging. In addition to problems in the plant, excess fertilizer also becomes an issue. With reduced microbial populations, much of the fertilizer is no longer able to be stored in the soil. This unused inorganic fertilizer leaches through the soil and enters the water table, contaminating it. Knowing all the problems and difficulties facing the modern farmer, is it possible to increase our soil's health and increase our profits? Yes, it is. TM21 is an organic product formulated to increase a diverse population of microlife in our soil. TM-treated crops consistently have more nutrients and a higher sugar level, resulting in better pest resistance and greater yields, and with greater yields comes increased profits. Inevitably, farming practices hurt the natural structure of the soil. When we repopulate the microlife of the soil by applying TM21, we help return our land to its natural healthy state where plants grow best.